In this organic chemistry uh, tutorial screencast, we're going to look at um, how to elucidate a structure given a couple different pieces of spectroscopic data. So the first thing that we're going to look at um, is the IR. And so as you can see, in the IR there's this very broad peak as I'm outlining in red here. So that has the typical um, shape of an OH peak. And so what I'm going to do is just write over here, so we have OH in the molecule. The other thing you want to look for in the IR is, is um, between the 16 and 1800 region. If there's any sort of um, peak. So there's nothing really here. So what that tells us is that there is no carbonyl. So that helps us a lot in that whatever structure we propose, um, there's no carbonyl. So that eliminates quite a bit of um, functional groups to consider. So really we've extracted the um, most amount of information um, from the IR at this point. We have an OH group, so we have an alcohol. So if we go down and we look at next the mass spectrum. So the mass spectrum we are actually given the molecular formula, C8H10O. And what I like to do first is determine the degrees of unsaturation uh, in that formula. And so if you remember for an alkane, it has a general molecular formula of CnH2n plus 2. So our compound has 8 carbons. So we just plug that in there. We have 2 times 8 plus 2. What we end up with is C8. 2 times 8 is uh, 16, plus 2 is 18. So for 8 carbons, we should have 18 hydrogens to be fully saturated, but you can see that we don't. We only have 10. So um, what we can do is take the C8, 8H10, and we're going to subtract what we have, H10. The oxygen neither adds nor subtracts to the hydrogen count, so we don't even consider it. And what we end up with is H8. So uh, a degree of unsaturation is defined as a pi bond or a ring. And in, in terms of a chemical reaction, it's equivalent to one molecule of H2. So if we divide the H8 by H2, we end up with four. So our molecule has four degrees of unsaturation. And we know from the IR that the oxygen is not part of a carbonyl. It's part of an alcohol. So pretty much what we're looking at is carbon-carbon um, pi bonds or a, a ring system with carbon. So now with, with this information, let's go down and look at the carbon-13 spectrum. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the proton decoupled. And what this is telling us is the unique number of carbons. And what we're going to do uh, is just count the peaks. The solvent is this thing here, CdCl3. That's what the sample is dissolved in. You actually see it in the spectrum, but you don't count the peaks. So let's just go ahead and identify here. We have one, two, three, four, Five. we have six unique carbons. The molecular formula has eight, C8H10O. So what is this telling us? That there's some sort of symmetry within this molecule. The other thing that is um, we need to consider about um, the carbon NMR is the location of these peaks along this spectrum. So again, the chemical shift delta and ppm runs from zero to upwards of 220 parts per million. So the, the, the peaks closer to zero here are sp3 hybridized. And then you hit this transition, I would say between 80 and 100. So anything, so let me let me draw a line here.
anything to the left of this line is usually going to be an sp2 hybridized carbon and you can see in the specific region um, we have um, four peaks that are sp2 hybridized and that specific region is the aromatic so aromatic is typically a benzene ring so what we're looking at is six carbons and if you count that um, depending on what the substitution pattern is you can have um, five or less hydrogens so you have a ring plus three pi bonds that gets you four degrees of unsaturation which we determined from the mass spec so we're dealing with some sort of benzene ring derivative and what I want to do is just put a point of substitution and then a squiggly line that indicates that's where, where some other substituent is bonded. Um, we, we need to at least put one because we're not dealing with benzene itself. What we can do now um, is go down and look at the proton NMR spectrum. Again, this, this, this is run in deuterated chloroform as well. And what I've written here, um, above the peaks in red numbers are uh, basically what we're going to use to determine uh, the ratio or the integrations of those peaks. But first let's go ahead and count the number of unique protons. We have one set, two, three, we have four unique sets of, of hydrogen. And so the numbers here, which I'm going to circle 40, 8, 8, and 24, that's what we're going to determine the number of, of protons in each of those peaks. So let's set up a table. So 40, 8, 8, 24. And we're going to take each of those and divide by 8, because that's the lowest number in this list here. If we take 40 divided by 8, we get 5. 8 divided by 8 is 1, 1, and 3. So what that is telling us is um, the number of protons associated with each peak. So this has 3, this has 1, this has 1, this has 5. So if we have a peak with 3 protons, we know that a fragment is going to be a methyl group, CH3, so methyl. So a, a single carbon with three hydrogens is named as a methane derivative. So as a substituent, it's methyl, YL. We go over, we end up with a single peak that integrates to one. Notice that it says exchanges with D2O. What that means is that that hydrogen is bonded to a heteroatom. And we know from the IR, we have an OH in the molecule. So this is the hydrogen bonded to that alcohol. It exchanges with deuterium to become OD. The next peak integrates to one. So we know that it's going to look like this. Let's just go ahead and draw the fragment. See, so these are points of attachment. And then finally, this one you might be thinking to yourself five. You can't have a carbon with five hydrogens. So this actually corresponds to the benzene ring. The protons actually occur as um, one unique set in this case. So because that integrates to five, it's telling us that this benzene ring is monosubstituted. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that gets us the hydrogen count from our molecular formula. So here are our fragments. We have a benzene ring. We have a carbon bonded to a single hydrogen, so that's called methine. We have an OH. We have a CH3. And so it's up to us to... Um, 
put these fragments together in such a way that we're obeying the Lewis dot um, rules. So look at one thing we can talk about is um, what these things mean here, these expansions. So this peak between 1.4 and 1.6 is a doublet. <clears throat> That's telling us that this methyl group has a single proton neighbor. So remember the n plus 1 rule to determine multiplicity. It has one neighbor, so what we can do is take the methyl group and bond it to this methine and make a new fragment. So this would be CH3, C, H. So we're, we're putting the methyl and the methine fragment together. That leaves us with the benzene ring and the alcohol. And so basically we're, we're just going to attach those two uh, together. But let's go ahead and look at this peak between 4.8 and 5, which is a quartet. So a quartet means that the peak of interest has three neighbors, so 3 plus 1 gets us 4, and we've already determined that from this relationship here. So the methyl and the methine are, are coupled. So we're going to go ahead and put the rest of these uh, fragments together. So we have our benzene ring. That's going to be bonded to the methine. So the H, we know that's bonded to the CH3, and then the OH. So here we're ending up with an alcohol. That has the molecular formula C8H10O. So in summary, we've used um, the IR, the mass spec, the carbon and proton NMR data to elucidate the structure um, from this molecular formula.